New allied race, new heritage armor, and more characters to fill. Why would you level an alt right now? And more importantly, how can you do it better? Not to worry, because in this video you will find out what you need to have and do for your alt to reach 120 from level 1. Starting off, the first and honestly best thing you can get is the Azeroth Autopilot add-on. Props to Zero for making this bad boy. The add-on will guide you through the fastest path to level up all the way to 120. You can set it up how you want, move things around and such. It does seem that for the starting zone it will just auto accept and drop off quests, but hey, do you really need help with the starting zone? Next up, you need to get the heirlooms for your class. Heirlooms will boost your XP gain, and if you really have the gold to spare, you can even get weapons and trinkets that will boost your stats and damage and of course make everything even faster. I will only be addressing the heirlooms that provide bonus XP, since if you don't have any, it will be a huge gold investment and it's better to start off small. Let's start with the easier ones to get. The shoulder piece and chest piece can simply be bought for 500 gold for the faction heirloom vendor. Since I am assuming you are doing this on your main, the horde one will be on top of the Orgrimmar gate since we got no undercity anymore yo! And the alliance one is in Ironforge in the Hall of Explorers. You will see a lot more heirlooms there and you can take your pick but I will be talking about the ones providing XP only. Next we have the headpiece for 500 gold that you can buy from the guild vendor in Orgrimmar and Stormwind. You have to be friendly with your guild to access it. The cloak will be the same 500 gold and friendly with your guild to buy it. Or alternatively you can buy the new cloak heirlooms from the Warfront vendors for 75 service medals. The legs will be a little bit tricky if you don't have a decent guild. You'll get them from the guild vendor for 500 gold. You have to be honored with your guild and your guild needs the working better as a team achievement. Most guilds already have this achievement so that shouldn't be a problem. If yours does not, quickly go and join a social guild or whatever, at least a guild with a few dozen players and it will most likely have the achieve. Next one is a little trickier to get and if you don't have them by now, I wouldn't really recommend farming them since it might take a while. But hey, if you plan on leveling a bunch of tunes, it might be worth the investment. Although, you could level a whole character by the time you get one of these, I think. And I'm talking about the rings! There are a few rings that provide a 5% XP boost. Three of them come from the naval missions in your Draenor garrison. You will need a level 3 shipyard, a ghostly spyglass equipment on one of your ships, and to clear treasure missions and you should eventually have the ring mission pop up. I haven't got mine yet, but good luck to you. Also, after you get one of them, you can stop, since they seem to be unique equipped, meaning you cannot have two of them. Another ring you can get though, is the Dread Pirate Ring from the Stranglethorn Fishing Extravaganza. This is even trickier to get because this quest is available at 2pm PST and 2pm CET on Sundays and only rewards the first 50 people on the server who complete it, so good luck! These are all the heirlooms that provide XP and you can get them in any gear type you want. If you don't have the money, you can level your warrior in cloth heirlooms. You will get the XP, but you won't get the armor stats buff since you are not wearing your class armor. Once you have the heirlooms you need, you will need to upgrade them as well. It will cost you 8.5k gold to get a basic heirloom to scale all the way up to level 120. If the heirloom no longer scales with your level, you no longer get the XP buff. Also, you can buy heirloom upgrade items with time warp badges if you want to save up on some gold. Also, a quick note here, if you can spare the gold, try to buy 35 heirlooms in total for the heirloom hoarder achievement. This will unlock the chauffeur chopper, which is a small mount that you can use until you reach level 20. It's not as fast as the main mounts, but it will get you there faster than on foot. You can just spend the 500 gold for additional heirlooms without upgrading them to get this done. Now that you have the heirlooms, let's get some more XP buffs. 
It goes without saying, but War Mode will provide additional 10% baseline XP from questing and you should always have this on. With 8.1.5 you can buy the Draught of the 10 lands from the Warfront vendor with 5 medals and it will give you another 10% XP for 1 hour. The potions are account bound, so you can pass them around like uh, uh, things you pass around when in large groups with friends. Da -da 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 -da. If the Dark Moon Fairy's up, you can even get the Top Hat for another 10% XP boost for 1 hour. Works as a potion in that it will consume upon its use. Also does not stack with the Wee buff. Or if the Midsummer Festival is up, you can get the 10% XP buff which does not stack with the Dark Moon buffs by doing the Ribbon Dance. The more you spin, the longer the buff will last up to 1 hour. Also, once you're a bit higher in your eye level, you can buy the insightful Rubelite gems for 5% bonus XP on sockets. They require a 200 eye level item to work though, so don't bother too early with them. And if you are super stacked on gold, you can buy the Elixir of Rapid Mind for a crap ton of gold. It will only work until level 99 though. Next up are a bunch of items that will give you immense quality of life when questing. You might not need them right away, but stack them in your bags before your leveling journey and you'll thank me later. Get Goblin Gliders. Horde characters need at least 40 simply for the leveling path you will take. The next thing, get the Water Strider mount, so you can walk over bodies of water on certain quests. Really helpful. You can also get Sprint Potions, Swim Potions and Drums of Fury for those wanted posters. These are usually useful later on and especially after level 110. One important thing is why are you leveling? Are you leveling to get a heritage armor? Are you leveling simply because you want another alt? Or are you leveling a class you want to play and don't care too much about what race it is? Well, either way, certain races and classes have their advantages when leveling and using those advantages can not only make it easier to level, but faster as well. So let's see who's good at what. Magar Orcs have an extra 10% mount speed and 10% pet health making them very good hunters. Nightborn Elves can access their mail on the go and make the best inscribers. High Mountain Torrents are the best miners and harvesters of meat and fish. If you're leveling a gathering alt, going high mountain for horde is the way. Xantelari trolls get more gold when looting and we all love gold. Void elves make good spellcasters since their casbar isn't delayed upon taking damage and this can really make a difference when you pull large groups of mobs at once. Lightforged Draenei get more XP from demons and are amazing blacksmiths. You can opt to pick leveling zones that have demons, such as the Outlands. Dark Iron Dwarfs move faster indoors, which make infiltration quests and escorting people out of buildings easier. More so than that, you can summon mole machines to teleport around the world, saving travel time. Plus, they make good blacksmiths as well. Kultiran humans are amazing swimmers for those underwater quests and also get boosts in all professions. Humans are the best race to grind reputation with. And you usually do this with major faction cities while leveling in dungeons, if that's your jam of course. Normal dwarves are the best archaeologists. If archaeology is a profession you want for your alt, you can develop it better with dwarves while leveling through the world. Night elves have their wisp form while dead. If you die while pulling too much, getting to your corpse will be way faster. Gnomes make the best engineers and engineering is a profession that's cool at all levels and leveling it as you yourself level might shave off some dull moments after all those quests. Plus gnomes have an increased resource pool meaning more mana, energy and so on which is helpful when continuously fighting in a quest zone. Draenei make the best jewel crafters and have their racial heal. This comes in handy especially if you plan on leveling a non-hybrid class. Worgens make for amazing skinners, plus they get a racial sprint and can go ground walk at mount speed with another one of their racials. Pandas have a few racials that make leveling better as well. Possibly the best one for leveling it is the double rested XP they can accumulate. 
you will take reduced fall damage and if you plan on cooking, which you should if you play pandas, the food buffs will last twice as long. Orcs have increased pet damage, making them good warlocks and hunters and pet classes are usually the best at questing. Undead can eat corpses to heal and have an innate lifesteal passive which is good when you play specs like arms warriors which have close to no sustain and also mages. Trolls get more XP from killing beasts and that's helpful because there are beasts all over the place. Also they have a passive life regeneration ratio, making prolonged combat phases less dangerous. I'm serious, while leveling one of my alts I was fighting island expeditions and was in combat for a few minutes and eventually died to lack of sustain. Other people would say that I am bad, but I say prejudice is not cool anymore guys. Torrents make the best herbalists. I keep mentioning gathering racials as benefits to leveling, which they are. Don't forget, you get XP from gathering and if you want to hit more birds with one stone, this will add up by the time you are at max level. Blood Elves make the best enchanters, plus they look go- Goblins have vendor discounts across Azeroth, meaning you don't need to max reputation to get the best prices and they make the best alchemists. Alchemy is one of the best professions right now in the game, so keep that in mind. We talked about races, but what benefits can classes bring? Well, shamans and death knights can walk on water and thus don't require you farm the water strider mount. Hunters and warlocks are amazing at soloing content, with a strong point leaning more on hunters. Paladin, monks and druids are the best hybrids in the game since they can fill all roles in a group. This will come in handy if you want to hop into a dungeon every now and again. Monks get a daily quest that reward them with bonus XP, couple them with pandas and you'll likely have yourself the fastest leveling combination in the game. Rogues are good at being efficient with questing, stealth through a lot of stuff and get your target. Demon hunters have glide, so no goblin gliders required. Picking a class that can heal or tank again will help you find groups easier and avoid those 30 minute queues. Now that you have your race, your spec and all of your mats, what do you do? Well, for the most part, Azeroth Autopilot will naturally guide you to the best leveling spot. Simply follow the arrow. If you don't really feel like using the add-on or simply want to know ahead of time what route you'll be taken on, then let's see. First of all, whatever you play, your starting zone will remain as the first default leveling zone. Once you're done with that, move on to Stormwind or Orgrimmar. Alliance will go to Redridge Mountains, then Duskwood, followed by Northern Stranglethorn Vale, Western Plaguelands, Loch Modan, and lastly finish up with Wetlands. Horde will go to Ajara, then to the Undead Zones, Silver Pine Forest, Hillsbred Foothills, Western Plaguelands, Eastern Plaguelands, and finish up with Northern Stranglethorn Vale. These are the best zones to follow through when questing and depending on how much XP boost you are stacking on your character, you'll probably won't need to finish them all. Another advice I have is to queue up for dungeons every other level or so. You want to aim for doing a dungeon once for the quest you can complete inside. Just doing the dungeon once will net you a lot of XP and change the scenery a bit. After this, the leveling zones will be similar for both factions until Warlords of Draenor. The best expansion to level in is Northrend, that will take you to Boreen Tundra, Dragonblight, Grizzly Hills, Zul'Drak. If you're still not level 80 by now, hop into Outland and do Zangamarsh and Nagrand. I mentioned before, but races such as Lightforge Draenei get more XP from demons, so maybe you will want to go straight to Outland instead of Northrend if that's your jam. After that, again, the best expansion to pick from will be Pandaria, starting with the Jade Forest, Kunlai Summit and Talong Steps. With a combination of questing, a dungeon once or twice and pet battles, I was done with Pandaria by the time I did half the Kunlai Zone, as an example. When you reach Wad and finish the intro, you will start in Frostfire as Horde and Shadowmoon as Alliance. After this, regardless of the faction, you will go to Gorgrunt and Talador. 
A few mentions here. From your garrison you can buy an XP potion that works only in Draenor zones. Also, if you follow the Azeroth autopilot you will not develop your garrison almost at all, so don't expect any infrastructure developments. Lastly, you will be doing quests, sure, but mostly the add-on will take you through bonus objectives and treasure hunting. If you are serious about leveling and haven't installed Azeroth Autopilot yet, this is the time to do it. Treasures give a quest turn in amount of XP for simply looting it and there's a crap ton of treasures. I didn't do a single dungeon wall in Draenor, but I did do a few pet battles and with all of this I barely reached halfway through Gorgrond before I was finished with Warlords of Draenor. Lastly, Legion. Not much to say here, two zones and you'll most likely be done. The zones I always do when leveling are High Mountain first, followed by Azuna. I will recommend doing the invasions. An invasion will give you almost an entire level on its own. Since no weapons drop in Legion, you have two choices. Either get an heirloom weapon or get your artifact weapon. To be fair, your actual questing doesn't start until you get an artifact weapon anyway. I would suggest picking the best weapon for the spec easiest to level with since going for the other weapons will waste a lot of time. You can do it if you want, but you will be slowing down your leveling. Last section of the video will be strictly for BFA zones since this part is the longest time wise. You gather some items earlier on for leveling, the pots, gliders and such. Now is the best time to use them since if you will speed level in BFA, you will start to drop down in power by the time you reach 120. If you will be leveling your legion alt and have the luxury of choosing your legendary, then choose Sefuz's secret and kill Jaden's burning wish. Since you will be running with heirlooms, you won't have traits to use, so you will lose a little bit of power. There are two viable ways of leveling that you should be taking and feel free to let me know if you think I'm wrong. One of the ways is the traditional one by simply leveling through the story. With a new XP potion and heirlooms it should be significantly quicker. For Alliance go to Drustvar first then Tiragard Sound. Horde gets Voldun first then Zuldazar. With all of this XP boost you will probably won't get the second zone properly before reaching max level. When I did this, I was also queuing for dungeons so I could start saving some Azerite armor to make my life easier once I reached max level. While you do this, make sure to always do the faction assaults for the bonus XP. Do all the world quests and finish the scenario with bombarding the enemy ship. After you finish it, you'll get a taste for victory 1 hour buff that persists through logging out. The other way to level that I recommend is Island Expeditions. With just heirlooms and the XP potion from the Warfront vendor, you would get a level by doing 5 to 10 islands. And throughout 2 alls so far, I only got one group that was slow in islands. All of my runs were around 10 minutes and even less when I got a 120 guy popping in. Although I haven't mathematically timed it, I would argue it's faster than the normal way. Plus, it's a change of pace. There are a few downsides with choosing either way. If you go with islands, you miss on unlocking flight paths around the world, which is not the hardest thing to do anyway, and also miss a bit on gear. However, with the doubloons you get, you can buy gear, but the XP gain is so high that you will level faster before even decking yourself in the bloom gear. Plus, all these islands will get you an Azrai necklace to at least level 15, which will ensure the majority of the main traits being usable off the bat. If you like this sleek, sexy UI, check our add-ons video. Marcillian will show you how to play WoW in style. Also, although not required, we have a Patreon page for anybody that wants to support us a bit more. We love what we do and we wouldn't be here without you. Thanks for watching the video, leave a comment down below if you think I've missed something and I'll see you in the next one.